Dear friends, today I'll be talking to you on a, one of the very important topic and again coming back to my fourth episode on vitamin D. And it has been, as it has been observed in this COVID problems, what all we are going on, that vitamin D deficient individuals have increased COVID morbidity and mortality. So that is going to be my today's topic based on the research, recent research published very recently in this month itself. Welcome to Lok Talks. This is Dr. Lukesh Bhatia. Subscribe to this channel for professional medical guidance, spirituality and meditation, life coaching, personality development and travel logs. Thank you very much to be a part of my viewership team. Thank you very much. So previously, the vitamin D advantages in terms of immunomodulatory effect were observed in bacterial and other viral infections. But now we have very well documented study for COVID-19 disease and the vitamin, it has been documented that the vitamin D influences the expression of various genes involved in the immune system, the innate and adaptive immunity and the downstream immunomodulatory and inflammatory cascade thus affecting the susceptibility to and severity of the bacterial and viral infections. Vitamin D can induce antimicrobial peptide cathelicidine LL-37 in neutrophils, NK cells and monocytes to cause reduction of herpes simplex virus titers. So this was very well known studied a fact in the past. In a recent meta-analysis of intervention trials, vitamin D supplementation has been observed to reduce the incidence of acute respiratory tract infections. SARS-CoV-2 infection, vitamin D deficiency may lead to a pro-inflammatory cytokine myelin, thus augmenting the disease severity. SARS-CoV-2 is known to build to ubiquitously expressed ACE2 receptor on the cell surface and subsequent ingress into the cell. Vitamin D may downregulate the ACE2 expression and prevent the viral entry into the cell. So this is what the mechanism which has been studied and the advantage of using in COVID-19 has been very well documented by a wonderful study done very recently and published this month only. So the COVID-19 is associated with a rise in inflammatory markers like D-dimer, fibrinogen and pro-inflammatory cytokines. A serial evaluation of inflammatory markers might help in evaluating and monitoring the severity of COVID-19 disease. It is noticed that certain serological markers like IL-6, CRP, ferritin, ESR are increased to a greater extent in people with severe disease than those with less severe disease. Also, the D-dimer less than 1 microgram per liter was an independent predictor of mortality in COVID-19 disease. So this is a very significant finding what I have been telling you. I repeat this my last point that D-dimer of more than one microgram per liter was an independent predictor of mortality in COVID-19 disease. So a significant difference in the levels of fibrinogen in patients achieving 25 hydroxy vitamin D of more than 50 nanograms per ml as compared to vitamin D deficiency individuals suggesting a possible immunomodulatory effect of vitamin D. The first study to demonstrate the role of therapeutic high dose daily oral vitamin D supplementation to attain more than 50 nanograms per ml and its effect on COVID-19. Well, are there any limitations to these studies? Yes, of course, there are limitations as there are limitations of every study. Mildly, mildly symptomatic 
and asymptomatic individuals were only enrolled in this study. What were the current questions? What levels of vitamin D have immunomodulatory functions in viral diseases, particularly SARS-CoV-2 infection? Role of therapeutic vitamin D supplementation in viral clearance. Next question comes is vitamin D effect on cytokine storm in patients with COVID-19 disease and can a high dose of vitamin D reduces the ICU or the hospital stay and the mortality in severe COVID-19 diseases and above uh, and the, stand, and the standard case. So according to the recent study, the immunomodulatory effect of vitamin D is going to be attained at much higher levels than what are actually required for the skeletal metabolism. So the skeletal effects for the optimum skeletal effects, the optimum levels are between 30 to 50. But to attain adequate immunomodulatory advantage, the vitamin D levels are much, much more higher. And as per the recent study, it has been found that it is required to be maintained in the range of 50 minimum to 100 to attain that advantage. Well, what we knew so far that vitamin D definitely has an immunomodulatory advantage in our body. So the severity of viral infections also gets increased in those who have vitamin D deficiency. But its role in SARS-CoV-2 infection is not, was not till this publication of the study. So what did they find in that study was that the daily administration of 60,000 international units of for 7 to 14 days and attaining the levels of more than 50 by all the participants in the study that has proven to be a great advantageous in recovering from vitamin D in reducing the morbidity and mortality of SARS-CoV-2 disease, COVID-19 disease. So the therapeutic high doses of daily administration has been proven to be of significantly greater advantage than the usual once a week or a twice a week administration of vitamin D, what we in usual practice we used to prescribe so far. So in the current era of late, I have changed my practice of prescribing, considering the immunomodulatory advantage of vitamin D, what each and every individual is requiring as of now to give vitamin D in a higher dosage on a regular basis. In my previous video, I have said that on a daily basis, one should not be taking it more than 4,000 international units. But this study, they have studied that more than 50 to 100 is the range in which the immunomodulatory effect of vitamin D is definitely attained and that is what is required. So definitely it's time to change our practice as far as this particular vitamin is concerned. No need to wait for your sunlight to give you advantage. I will repeat my three points what I have said it before for sunshine, sunshine because whenever the sunshine comes in mind, definitely people think about vitamin D and whenever vitamin D comes in our mind, people start thinking about sunshine or the sunlight, right? So for sunlight to give you advantage, you need to have at least more than 20 minutes of exposure, more than 30 to 35 percent of your body surface area exposure and regularly exposure is required to sunlight and in India the time period is 11 to 2 p.m. and in Qatar the time period is 9 to 11 a.m. So you can very well understand how the and the best uh, advantage of the uh, daily requirement of vitamin D from food sources one cannot attain it more than 200 international units. On an average, what we have, the daily requirement of vitamin D is 600 to 800 international units. I repeat, 
now we definitely need to be sure about that our labels are good enough if you cannot get it checked because of the current restrictions it is very much prudent to take at least for a minimum period of 7 days to 14 days time a tablet daily of vitamin D of 50,000 here in Qatar because as we don't get higher than this and 60,000 international units in India which is not difficult to get it even without prescription one can procure it. So dear friends definitely try to maintain your vitamin D levels in very much optimized levels. The optimized levels for immunomodulatory effect this is my concluding statement about this particular video that it is to be maintained in the range of 50 to 100 without being worried about the hypervitaminosis D effects. All right. As they have studied in this very well that even up to 100 people can very well tolerate the levels of vitamin D and it has really helped for all the patients with COVID-19 to recover them faster with milder disease and that's how they have reached to a wonderful conclusion to remarkably helping in the management of COVID-19. Thank you very much. All the best. God bless you. Take care. Hope I could bring it a good point for a patient and for the medical fraternity as well that we must change and our daily practice also so that we can help all our suffering patients from the current scenario. Thank you very much. All the best. God bless you. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.